Hello guys, Duran Slash Learn Swain here and welcome to episode 1 of the Commodore 32 tutorial series. In this series I will be teaching you how to use the Commodore 32, how to make programs for it. This will be episode 1 where I will show you how to install the Commodore 32 because a lot of people seem to be having problems with that. So uh, to begin, when you go to the form page there will be a link in the description and download the computer obviously so you're gonna need to click here as the text says I've already done so and you will download this little zip file over here now if you want to develop programs for it you also want to click here so for episode 2 you'll be needing this also note the version number if you've already downloaded it and you got a version that isn't or that's older than 1.1.1 please do download the latest version because as you can see I made a bunch of improvements and 1.1.1 is particularly important because the uploader completely broke with the latest Minecraft update. So uh, once you download this file you just want to extract the zip to here or wherever and open it up and you will find these three things. So there's a little change log here which will tell you what's been updated there's a manual which will cover basically what I'm telling you and go into a bit more detail so read that if you want uh, there's this folder which is the world and there's this folder which contains some programs which I will show you later so this is the Minecraft world so uh, the next step is to copy this to your saves directory so um, de this depends on your operating system for me I'm using Windows at the moment so that's your C drive, users, your username, app data, roaming, Minecraft saves. Or, you know, just look it up depending on your operating system. It's different for your saves directory. And then you'll see this. So, or whatever worlds you have. Make sure Minecraft is closed while you're doing this, by the way. So you're going to copy that. And I should probably use this so you can actually see what I'm doing. And paste it in there. All right. Next up we obviously open Minecraft and it'll do some stuff and we're gonna make this the right size and it changes size anyway damn you Minecraft alright next step um, right now at the time of recording Minecraft 1.7.10 is still the latest one um, if at the time I'm recording this or if at the time you're watching this Minecraft 1.8 is out ignore the step but if it hasn't, then you're going to need the snapshot. So if you don't have a snapshot prof profile like I do, you're going to click new profile, and just call it whatever you want. Tick this box over here, and then say use latest version here. And uh, yeah, then save profile. And I'm not going to do that because I already have a profile. So obviously next, we are going to open Minecraft. If this is your first time launching the snapshot, it'll take a little longer than usual. Oops. Alright, now, next up, before we go over and open the world, we are going to go to Options, Video Settings, and we're going to do some important stuff here. So, Rendering Distance, this is quite important because the computer is pretty big. You want the whole computer to be loaded. I'd recommend, like, 15 chunks at least. 17 chunks to be sure, because that's kind of what I keep it on. I haven't actually tested how low it goes. Just 17 chunks if your computer can handle it. Um, max frame rate, you'll want at least 60 frames per second. Obviously, you can set it to that much, but it's not going to do anything if V-Sync's on. So, I'm just going to keep it at 60. This is going to be important later. Um, full screen should be off. I'll show you why that as well later. Clouds, I'd recommend you keep clouds off because the computer control panel is pretty high up and you don't want clouds in your vision. And the rest of the settings don't really matter, but I do recommend you keep them down if you have a bad computer because the Commodore 32 is pretty laggy, so you're going to want as little lag as possible. So I'd recommend you turn the other settings down. Uh, next, let's see, controls. Uh, if you never change the controls, this is fine. But if you have customized your controls, you're going to want to double check that open chat is the letter T. So if you want to change that, you just click it, push the letter T, and click reset keys if you're not sure at all. 
you're completely lost. But uh, yeah, that's all. I'll show you why all those settings are necessary much later. So now we can open the world and you will see this. The big Commando 32 logo and some switches, some buttons, a little control panel and a little room over here. Now this sign over here tells you the version. As you can see I downloaded version 1.1.1 and who made it was obviously me and some other controls that you don't really need to worry about. Most of it's self-explanatory. If you don't know what it does, don't click it. <laughs> if you want to know what it does, then click it, but, you know. And here's the main control panel. So this will turn the computer on, this pauses the computer, this resets it or turns it off. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much the main controls. Oh, there's one, basically, this A, B, C buttons, X, Y, Z levers, one, two, three lamps, and then you got the D-pad over here. And there's one more button in the center. So uh, a lot of the programs, which I'm gonna show you now, included, well, every single program actually, includes a readme text file and the program itself. And this will often refer to the center button, button A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and one, two, three lamps, or left, right, center lamps. So just know what those are. Finally, if you want to enter a number in the computer, you push the center button, you push the letter T, you click here, and you enter the number, say, 42, and you push enter, and then that sets the number. Also, this lamp blinks while you're busy changing it, so if you push this button, this lamp will blink to show that you still need to input a number. You need to push that button every time you want to change the number, by the way. Don't just click here when this lamp is still constantly lit. Alright, so that's the basics. Uh, one final thing, uploading programs. If it comes by default with a paint program, uh, you can see the paint instructions over here in the programs games paint folder. And there will also be a video in the description which shows me using it. But if you want to use any of the other programs that are included, you're going to need to open this block loader program. This is just a simple Java program that will ask you for a file. So say I wanted to upload the guess the number game. Then, okay, so here's what you need to do. So you're gonna make want to make sure that Minecraft is paused. And what you then do is you select your file you want to upload and that was the tricky bit. You click upload, and as soon as you click that, you're gonna switch to Minecraft and do nothing. Just don't touch the keyboard or the mouse, and you'll see it will automatically start entering commands. Now it's important that you select Minecraft and not like Skype or Facebook, because then it will rapidly start sending scoreboard player set messages to whoever you've selected in your chat method of choice, which has happened before. Uh, to people who have tested this. So as you can see, it writes a bunch of scoreboard set commands. And you'll also see that in my case, because I'm using Windows 8, I actually missed a few commands here. For example here, because it's supposed to do three commands per player number. So you can see one, two, three, one, two, only two for player 21. So if you've got a slow computer or you're running Windows 8, you're gonna wanna run that program again, at least twice. I'd recommend like three times to make sure that the program uploads correctly. Once that's done, a pretty important part of the upload process is to push the reset button again, and that will basically reset the computer so that it can run this new program. And then finally you push the on button. If it acts weird, just try upload it again because then it didn't upload correctly. So uh, that's it for how to use the command door 32. Uh, this, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. These, of course, will teleport you to your components so you can look at them and be in awe or something. But uh, that's all the important stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video, 